Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our 2D hack and slash lesson course. Uh, this is part 16, I think. This is a pay what you want course. There are two links in the description if you want to support the course. One is my pixel art course on Udemy, and the other is itch.io, where you can donate as you download the resources. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about DS lists. If you remember from our last lesson, when we left off, our, our hitbox object was, since we want it to be um, alive for four frames, it was hitting our enemy four times and dealing more damage than what we wanted it to. We only want it to hit the enemy one time. So the solution to this problem that I have come up with is to make a list inside, like each hitbox will have a list and it will keep track of the objects that it's already hit. And if it's already hit an object, it won't hit that object again. So let's do this. We're going to learn about DS lists. Now DS just stands for data structure. So in GameMaker, there are different data structures that you can use in order to store data. So it's a structure for storing data in. And a list is one of them. Now the benefit of a list is that we can easily add to the list without knowing how many objects are in the list. So let's say we have an object, a list of an unknown amount of objects. We can add a new object to that list and we don't have to worry, oh man, are we adding, you know, the 15th object or the 16th object or element to that list, whatever data. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a variable that can contain multiple values in it, uh, similar to an array. So it's kind of like an array in that way, but uh, we don't have to know how many values are in it in order to add to it whereas an array you kind of do. So let's create one right here. We're going to call this hit objects. This is it's like creating a variable, right? And we'll say equals ds list create. So this function right here creates a, a new ds list, which is our data structure, and it stores that data structure inside of this hit objects right here. And so we can keep track of the objects that we've hit. So let's add an object to our list. So once we deal damage to an object in our collision event right here, we want to add the, the object to our list, right? So we'll say ds list add. This is the function. Now we need to tell it which list we want to add to. So we're going to say our hit objects list and then we need to tell it what value we're going to add to the list and in this case we want to add the ID of the object that we just hit which is going to be other like this okay and so once we set that up then our our object will then be stored in this list as a hit object so once we once we hit our knight, it will store the knight's ID inside of the hit objects list. Now we want to make sure that we don't hit it if it's already in the list. So we're going to add that use case to our exit above up above here. So how do we check if it's already in the list? We can say or ds list find value so we can find a value inside of our list. Now this wants to get, uh, we need to pass in which list we're going to search through. So hit objects, right? And then we need to tell it which value we're looking for. Well, we want to look to see if the other object that we're colliding with is inside the list. So we'll say other. Now let's use our documentation to make sure that we know what this function right here returns. So we're going to middle click on DS, let's find other, or find value. And you can see it returns a real, a string, 
or undefined. So it's going to return the value that we find. Wait, we need to do DS list find index. Which one did we use? Yeah, we used. Yeah, we used find value. We need to do find index. Okay, index. So this is why you use the documentation. <laughs> Um, so you we pass in an ID and a value. There we go. Now let's middle click on this. And so DS list find index will return a real, which is which means it's just going to return a number. Now let's read the description. With this function, you can check the given list for a value and the position within the list for that value will be returned, meaning if the value let's say we have five objects in there and the object that we're looking for is the fifth object then it's going to return a value of four because it's always one less right than the total number so it's going to return a value of four if it's the first object we're looking for it's going to return a value of zero however there's a note note that if there are more than one entries in the list it will return with the same value, the position of any one of them may be returned. So it's not necessarily ordered. So if you have multiple versions of the same object, but we don't have to worry about this because we won't. And that if the value does not exist, then it will then it will return negative one. So if we look through the list and we can't find this value, it will return negative one. That's the important part. So we want to say if DS list find index is not equal to negative one. So if it's not equal to negative one, that means we found this object inside of our hit list, our hit objects list. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds kind of bad, but inside of our hit objects list. So <laughs> we found it inside of our hit objects list if it doesn't return negative one. If it does return negative one, then it means it's not in there yet. So now let's try this again. We're still showing the debug message, but this time when we run the game, it shouldn't deal damage more than one time. So our enemy is still not attacking. We create it. Okay, so we've only, you can see down here in the corner, we've only dealt damage one time. Even though our attack was up for more than one frame, it was still up for four frames, but it kept track of the enemy and dealt damage. There we go. And we killed the enemy when its health went all the way down. So that's looking really good now. However, there's a problem. We currently have what's called a memory leak. And let me see if I can show this to you. Let's run our game in debug mode. That's just this little bug right here. And if you look at our memory usage right here, um, we're at 7.61 megabytes over here. It's kind of hard to see probably. Okay. And however, as we attack more and more, our memory use goes up. That's because each time we create a hitbox, we're creating a DS list. But DS lists aren't freed from memory automatically. So we've got our memory usage all the way up to 7.66. And I don't know how high we can get it. If it'll go up more. Seems like it's uh, hard to tell because Oh, this is a better place to look right here because this this right here is a, in kilobytes instead of in megabytes, so it's not rounded. But you can see well, it is going up. It just seems kind of slow. It's probably because there's hardly there's no there's hardly anything stored in those hitboxes but it's still going up. So let's end debug mode right here. Whoa, that was interesting. And we'll come into uh, inside of our
hit box right here and we're going to add an event. We're going to add a cleanup event. So this event is run. My understanding is this event is run when you change rooms, when you uh, when an object is destroyed. It's basically an event specifically designed for destroying data structures. So we need to get rid of the data structure, um, the, the list that we created right here. We also need to get rid of it in our cleanup event right here. So we can say DS list and destroy. So DS list destroy and then we'll do hit objects and destroy our hit objects list. Oops, let's run the game in debug mode again and check to see if our memory is increasing. Seven point seven megabytes. It increased a bunch right at first, but that might have just been the game running. But it doesn't s seem to be increasing now. In fact, it went down just a little bit there. So I think it's working. And let's, so I think we're good there. So then our hitbox now keeps track of the objects that it's hit in a DS list and then destroys that DS list when um, it, it gets destroyed so we don't have a memory leak. Let's close the debugger again. And we'll come back into our night and turn back on will uncomment the attack state so now our knight should be able to attack again and we should <laughs> you can just barely kill the knight before it kills you if you're fast so in the next lesson we're going to be covering the knockback state for our knight so that when it gets hit it gets put in a little bit of a stun state and can't attack you back uh, this is very common, so it's an important part of this type of game, I think. And that's what we'll be covering in the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys later.